Welcome to Project Brewpeg. Last week with Scott's help you saw us get these solar panels mounted up onto the roof. This week we're getting the cabling run. So it's running through the lounge, through our MPPT charge controllers, through fusing and off into the batteries. If you'd like to know more about the project and how we intend to go down to Antarctica, check out our website at brewpeg.com. If you'd like to support the project, look for us on Patreon, search for Project Brewpeg. So I shot back into town this morning and did a parts run. Um, got a stack of black cable, so this is going to be doing our earth runs. I'm going to start doubling this up and feeding two cables at a time through this um, bulkhead fitting here, all the way down our conduit and out to the roof onto the panels. So, I've gone through, tidied the wiring up, so let me show you what I've done. We start off down here, and I've basically, I've basically gone through and just separated them into the two groups, so positive and negative, all the way down, and kept them as sort of uniform as I can. Now I'm going to add a lot more cable ties in, this is all sort of still temporary holding for now. Um, mainly so that I can just figure out like run lengths and, and that sort of thing. In the corners we've got the additional conduit, comes up, we've still got them separated out. It's a little bit hard to see, there we go with the light. You can still sort of see they're separated out into their groups. Again they need a lot more zip tie and so on just to hold them neat. Right up under here we've got more conduit where it goes out of the, the clip-on white conduit and into black flexi, goes through our um, ready-made holes in the side with conduit going through the holes so that there's nothing that can touch anything and then on the outside of the boat they come through I probably need to trim that conduit a little bit more but they come through and go into this waterproof box that gets a lid put on top and that's what seals everything uh, water and moisture from going into the into the boat from there they go through cable glands and the that black one is following the path that it's going to go on. We'll tidy it up and move it closer to the roof. And we'll also put black conduit, flexi conduit on that and leading through those two uh, rims that we put there with the old uh, flexi conduit trick as well. So up on the roof, I'll show you what we've got. On the roof, we've got our waterproof box. If I just get rid of that lid, you can sort of see how it works. So we've got, come this side, I might be able to show you a bit better. So we've got our positive and negative coming up through the roof. So we'll have four of those. We're going to have a positive and negative for each of the pairs coming out and going straight across the roof there. Now what we're going to do here is put a, um, a piece of plastic uh, moulding, there's a specific piece of plastic moulding you can get that stops it being a trip hazard and it's bright yellow and it's got um, grippy stuff on it so we're going to have that right across so it's very obvious. Um, then we've got our positive and negative going forward to these pairs and positive and negative going back to those ones there. So this one is actually all hooked up. Um, we just need to go through now and start putting a conduit in and getting it to the way that we want it to be sitting. Um, then we're going to start feeding this cable. I'm either thinking coiling excess up in this box because we'll probably have the room or pushing it down and feeding it all the way back because we may need it at the other end. So we'll just see how we go with cable lengths and so on. Some of the runs were pretty close. We might have maybe one metre to spare across the whole run. Um, which sounds like a lot but it's really not when you're nervously unwinding it from a coil of wire. Gus, an awesome day. Look at this. This is what it's like working in the yard. So the water's not very far away. We launch, you sort of see that travel lift over in the far 
far side there between that large white boat on the right hand side and the yacht on the left it's got a what's we got it's got a yacht hanging out of it at the moment that mast is in the travel lift they basically dump it in the water just over there all the way around us that's the marina building um, just over to the side there on the water and that big noise you can hear I'm going to spin right around so this is the main yard our neighbour's boat just beside us those blue sheds over the back with the black sort of roof type thing that's a that's three sandblasting bays but quite often we end up with a lot of sandblasting noise that's some of the noise you can hear in the background probably doesn't matter but I got four cables so I'm trying to keep them as tight and uniform into a square as possible rather than having them say like four flat which takes up lots of room and it's awkward to bundle I'm trying to get them like if you imagine a square with a cable in each corner it's probably just me being pedantic but whatever it certainly makes this part easier so I'm using these little plastic boxes they have a rubber um, like an o-ring type thing gasket around the edge and they're held on with these I don't know if you can see them or not but basically it's a little wee plastic essentially it's like a plastic bolt um, Phillips head bolt I don't know how well they're going to last but it seems to be what a lot of people use um, I would love like a stainless box but I'm also not prepared to spend $200 on every one of these boxes if it was stainless and I don't have the time to build them Under the floor of the wheelhouse, we have our battery box. Now, I know you just saw me rip my climb in here. It's been around, right. I know you saw me rip the green box of death apart. And that's where it came from. Made a bit of a mess. But I have a very, very easy way of solving this. I'm gonna just take all of this stuff off because we're gonna rejig where things are sitting. And we're gonna put a flat piece of plywood straight over top. Battery backbone gone. Right, it's quite a lot of temporary wiring in here that I'm going to take the opportunity to clean up. <coughs> so, my plan is this. This area is really accessible, so I'm thinking like fuses and stuff that I really want to get access to fast if I ever need it. The area over there is not really as accessible. Um, like, a, you've got to basically climb in and, you know, get right over to actually access it. So fuses over there doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna rejig how I've done it. I'm gonna put all of my charge controllers on that corner. I'm gonna put all of my fuses and distribution circuit breakers, all that sort of stuff is gonna be over on this side. Mainly so I have faster access to everything should I ever need it. Um, now, a lot of people have wondered why I actually used wood in, in here, given that it's a battery box and theoretically that if a fire happens here, I've got a big stack of wood that's gonna work as fuel. Um, yes, it does burn. A lot of boats are built out of wood and they seem to survive okay. So. I'm not too stressed about the fire risk, that's manageable if I do this bit properly. If I don't do it properly, it doesn't matter what I put here, I'm going to have problems. Um, the other reason why I use wood is because it's non-conductive. So um, it's great because I can screw stuff into it knowing full well that if it was aluminium or something like that, I'd have, I'd have to insulate everything. But being wood, it's really, really forgiving, it's easy, it works, I personally think it works really well as a, as a medium um, to set up a distribution board like this. So that's the bottom. Oh, the fit. Looking out the window, reflecting who I We literally have a clean slate. Okay, so charge controller time. We're using Victron charge MPPT charge controllers. Um, there's two types of charge controllers out there. Um, PWM, I think it's pulse, pulse width modulation, I think from memory, um, and MPPT, multi PowerPoint tracking. Um, these are way better, MPPTs are way better. They, they, I, think, I think the numbers are something like 20 to 30% more efficient than a PWM. Um, they deal with shading a hell of a lot better, which is exactly what you want on a boat. Get a lot of shading on a boat and you also don't have the optimum solar angle so on a house you can t 
tilt your solar panel to suit where's going to be the best sun at midday or you know whatever you're trying to set it up for on a boat you generally can't do that and you generally have flat panels and then you just put up with whatever you get MPPTs deal with that a hell of a lot better than um, pulse width modulation charge controllers um, because they can vary the voltage of the solar panel. So um, on our old 12 volt system on our yacht, our solar panels would go anywhere between 10 volts and 19 volts and they'd go, they'd float up and down in, in voltage depending on whatever was the charge controller determined was best for the batteries at that time given the sun and the battery state and all that sort of stuff. So MPPT, there's not a big difference in price. Don't muck around with pulse width modulation. It's old technology. Um, these ones that we're using are the um, 120, so you can put 100 volts in and you get 20 amps out. Um, we're using uh, 24 volts, so we can have a maximum of 580 watts of solar per charge controller. So we've got 470, so we're underloading these slightly, and we've got four of these. Um, if we were doing a 12 volt system, we'd be able to do 290 watts um, per panel. So. Uh, or sorry, 290 watts in total of solar coming into one of these and you get 20 amps out of it. So, um, yeah, Victron's got a pretty good name. Um, a lot of people sort of rave about them. I've never used them, so this is going to be my first chance at using them. So, uh, yeah, let's get into setting them up and see what they're like. So I'm working to a wiring diagram that one of our um, viewers, Tim, he's a good mate of ours, he's created a bloody awesome wiring diagram. I'll chuck a photo of it up on the screen here. So this is what we're actually working to. So I'm going to be mounting the charge controllers. Um, they're already going through breakers, which are mounted at the other end of the boat, as close as we can get to the solar panels. So it protects all the wiring that's running through the lounge and basically downstream of the panels. They come straight into these charge controllers. From there, they go into a positive distribution block. And then from that positive, we go through a switch, which we're going to use one of our Nava switches we showed you earlier. Um, and then from there, we've got another breaker that it goes through, um, which is a what do we got? It's an 80 amp breaker because we've got four of these. We're combining them. It's going to be up to 80 amps. So we've got an 80 amp breaker that it then goes through. Um, and from there, it's off to our loads and distribution boards and things like that. So let's get into mounting these and figure out where we're going to start running some cables. Is there anything in here that we need to keep? No, there's just a book. What could I do without that reference? Yeah, it sounds like she's back. Yeah, I reckon we'll fit them in. Well, one and two. Okay. What have we got exactly down here? We've got four Three, charges. Four. That yeah, would be that's four. pretty nice. And all the wires there are current. Yeah. We need the bus bars, which would be really good to have maybe a common earth in the middle. Yeah. For everything to get to. Yeah. Um, and leave a positive over here or something and feed over? Or? That's what I'm thinking, yeah. Um, okay. Just remember the diagram on your laptop. Yeah. It's very clear how it had basically all solar wind. Yeah. That's where all, will the wind be coming through there as well? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. The battery's already easy, in here. It's easier to feed it via the wall here. Yeah. So I'll just put another grommet, another um, uh, cable gland in here for the like, positive and negative again. Yeah. And then I'll do another one down here later yep. for wind. And as far as battery switches, yep. they're the things that have the big cables going into them and then where they come out. So if we have one, two, three, four. I was going to mount these on the other side of the wall. Yeah, nice. Okay. Facing yep. that way so that we can access them without getting in here. Yep. How do we run the cable through? Through a hole? Yeah, we could just drill a hole. They, and they're big stonking great. Oh my God, huge, hey? Yeah, that's, that's a big hole. Yeah. You gotta cut a big hole anyway, I guess. But. I'd rather just put a hole saw through for the cables and we'll figure it out later. Yep. The flip side is it's the big cables. Yep. Or, or are they? No, because these are, this is only has to have. Well, they're only a small one if we're talking solar. Hello. 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 How are you going? Good. Going with you, Ethan. Yeah, earlier, but I'll, I'll, need, I'll need to get some lunch shortly. Pull a little bit back and coil it somewhere. Just yeah. a wrap or two on each one. Most amount of space in the world to work down here. Yeah. I like keeping them up high too because it lets you access below them quite yeah. easy. That makes sense. Yeah, what did you think of that battery monitor? I had a quick look at it when I looked it up online. I think it's fine, eh? The NASA one? Yeah. Yeah. Mate, they're all the same. They're all got the same sort of algorithms in them. Yeah. Uh, you just need the shunt with it. Obviously, that's how they work. Yeah, I think I think it's a, like a 200 amp shunt or yeah, something. Yeah, perfect. And that goes on a negative. Yes. So all of these negatives, um, this is my boat bill, actually. Oh, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Warren. Good. Good. Scott's Let's getting go. this eight meter boat built, and it's bloody awesome. 
He's got flexible solar panels that are glued to the roof. It's a little aluminium half cabin thing. Um, twin outboards. It's a long range expedition trailer boat. So. Oh, boat building. It's fun, isn't it? <laughs> so many decisions, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. That looks good. Here's the next one. All right, cool. Yeah, I did the maths using a quarter. Yeah. So on a good day like today, you'd probably go to a third and make even more power, but you'll be making 50 amp hours per panel per day. God, you got eight of them. That's so 400 amount. plus amps. Yeah. <laughs> Jess is cooking up a storm. The smell of like fried onions and some meat and stuff wafting through the whole boat. Good and big right? Yeah, I think so too. I, I like it like that because uh, all the wiring then can be yeah. together. So we'll connect that all up to the earth. Uh, Is it, so what's different between a, like the battery negative? Typically positive? nothing. It just makes sure that the negative coming out yeah. is always at the same as the earth of the, the uh, chassis. Right. Yeah. So it's grounding. I mean, they could normally do it internal, but normally you could put that onto the earth of the boat. Yeah. And then run an earthing system, whether you earth that or not. But yeah, right. It doesn't. Doesn't. Really so because matter. this is non-conductive, it yeah. almost doesn't matter. No, yeah. Doesn't. Okay. Everything. So we're gonna have battery negative needs to run to this. Right. So um, I'm just thinking. Just thinking outside the box. Yep. We put it horizontally at the bottom. It means every negative cable has to make its way to the bottom yep. and run in a loom to there. Do you want to have it up so you can staple both the ones sides. here? Yeah, both oh, sides. Okay. Above, so just you can run all your negative cables. It's just an idea. Yep. Um, okay, so then and then what we have this. And then this we want close to where yeah, there or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we've got to put a box in for the, the wind turbine as well, don't we? So we just have the I guess the box. Put that down there. the end maybe. So therefore a nice positive here, which yep. is easy to then run a big cable wheel all out yep. to our master battery switch, yep. Yep. and then into the batteries. All right, that's pretty easy then. Um, fusing, where, where are we putting our fusing? We probably want to have that up here pretty close to this, don't we? You'd almost want to have it straight after the that, wouldn't you? Yeah, so we've got two batteries, yep. and then we've got... Let me have a look at that diagram. I keep looking at my phone in case you're wondering, it's because on here I have the diagram that we've been working to. So we've got we've got our Victrons, it goes down into our positive. He's got it going straight through a switch then, on off switch, versus going through and then and then going to a breaker. You want to have the breaker first. Protecting everything downstream. Or is he just doing it up there for simplicity? Yeah, so these breakers normally for power coming back in. Right. So if one of these boxes fails, yep. and I get a direct short in it, yep. you want something to stop the power coming into it, directing the battery, stop this right. catching on fire. Ah, Not right. so much of the contained smart charger come output. Right, because it can't really do well, more than what it's... It can only use the power coming out of the cell, which is limited anyway, and then right. we can isolate that unit if it malfunctions okay. on that side. Okay, so the breaker isn't protect this, it's... it's not, not particularly, That yeah. way it's... Yeah, because yeah, okay. you only ever get, you only get, what, 230 watts at 12. 24 volts. So you're only going to get what's that like 20 amp coming out of this? Is it a 15 amp? 20 amp. It's a 20 amp. So that's the max you're going to get out. All right, and it's going to be rated for that anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Cool. So, okay. So it's more the reverse flow. If so if that's goes the, wrong. Okay. So then, so then, if that's the case, then so this relatively close to these. I like that. And yeah. and with our wind space over there. Yep. Yeah. Will come straight in over here. So. I'm thinking and bring, a, bring a, a switch next to it. Bring our cables up quite tight and then we can have wind down here and it allows whatever space, because my old wind charge controller was about that big, yeah. but it's probably got smaller nowadays. But um, So let's maybe keep this up like that, somewhere like that. Yep. Okay, and then... Give uh, yourself a little bit of playroom for uh, corner radius of the cables, especially when you all put them into the same loom. Okay, sure. Need a left and then a right. Okay, so, that. so bring, bring it yeah, down. I reckon that's perfect. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. So we'll put that in there. Then we're going to have our earth down the bottom here somewhere, you reckon? Yeah, I like it down the bottom because yep. it separates all the positive connections at the top yep. with earth at the bottom, noting that you don't want anything to fall down into the earth. Yeah. But um, 
I guess that's your penalty. It's less line. dangerous than falling into a positive. Yeah, and it's that's why we circuit break the more. So yeah, you can imagine if. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, um, should we mount this one in there? I think so. All right. Oh, just screw preloaded. If you put them um, convenient places like here and here, yeah, I like that idea because then you could have either just a lift up, yeah, yeah. hatch or a cut out in your floor with a hinge on it. Yeah. So you just lift up the. Yeah, yeah, easy. Um, let's do that. Yeah, let's do uh, that. It's out of the harm's way if water splashes. The main reason stuff. why I was thinking over there was just the speed of access. But if we do a solution up here, then it solves the problem. So. Oh yeah, I get what you're saying. If you yeah. want to do it, do it. No, I'm not. I, I don't like the idea of going through the metal. Yeah, I don't need that. Not yeah. direct battery feeds. So. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. But hey, I, do you want to stop for food or will it end up here? Yeah, I'll stop for food. Stop? Yeah. Oh. Big boys need lunch too. So maybe just chuck them up like that. I reckon that's good. Because you can just go through and go. Yeah. Alright, cool. Alright, I'm going to race over and grab some screws. Okay. We'll get them in. We'll go for a walk. Go over the road and get some bolts. People must think I'm such a wanker walking around with this camera sometimes. <laughs> This is our ready-made chandlery store. <laughs> Lugs. So that's what we need for our battery switches. And then we're also going to see what else we've got over here to use. Now that we've got our bits, let's go back to the boat and put them back in. One of the issues that we're coming up against is how we're going to do the layout of this board. So we've got up in this corner here, we're going to use our, our fusing and everything's going to be up on this corner so it's easy access and so on. So all of the top row on this side is going to be stuff that we want to access fast. So like the likes of our switches, the likes of our fuse boards, etc. One of the issues we have is we don't have the fuse boards that we want to use. So we've got, we've got these sort of fuse boards. So it's basically just a blade fuse holder with a distribution um, it's actually a negative earthing block that we used, um, re repurposed previously for positive. We're getting rid of all of that system because it's a bit crap. Um, the Blue Sea system is pretty cool. So you have a main, a single main positive feed that goes in at the bottom and then all of your fusing will come out of it. So you have blade fuses that you then just plug a line in that goes off to whatever your load is, lights or you know whatever it might be. Um, all of the negatives go at the top of that but in this case we don't need to use the negatives because we'll have a, a negative strip um, down on the bottom here. However, we don't have a Blue Seas board at the moment um, and we can't easily get one locally so we have to order that in um, so it will take a while to get to us and in the meantime we're going to be using um, a fuse block over on this side that's not our ideal situation but it's going to be close enough that we can easily replicate um, when we get the uh, Blue Seas fuse board we can easily just swap it in and out so it's a bit of mucking around, a bit of back and forth but we, I think we'll get there today. Room. Well, I can see through there. Can we get in there enough? Yeah. You want to put another grommet in? Yeah. Have a red and a black one? We have to, yeah. Beautiful. That will do. Okay, so over in this corner we've created one of our grommets that we use. We thought about putting in a cable gland, but we're internal. We don't need a waterproof and there's no need to waterproof between this bulkhead. So one of our cable glands will be enough. We'll come through there and we'll start bringing it down onto our panel. While I've been doing that, Scott, he's organizing the cable runs that come out of this wall, putting them into flexi conduit all the way down so that we can run two of them, a positive and a negative feed with the four cables in each, down through that grommet. Okay, so. Wire in the hole. Not the red. The third one. Yep. And then 
keep pulling. Go forward. Oh, that's fourth. That's fourth. Got it, done. Thank you. Okay, so that's a conduit length, so let's split that out. Get that there. Right. So, are you positioned right at your end? Yeah, that looks great. This is how we go through. Just get where you're happy with it. Right. Uh, right there looks absolutely ideal. Alright, cool. Right, so I'll cut mine there. Fine tune later. We need to. Alright. Okay. So there's that. We've got quite a bit of spare cable here, so if we need to pull some back, we can. Beautiful. Alright. Here comes the blacks. Yep, go for it. I'll just coil these out of the way. Go to when you're happy. I think the air is great. Alright, so. Just give me an inch or two to play with if you need it. Yep. So it should match the red one, to be honest. Yep. So let's cut it there. So let's split the cabling out. So my cut is. Okay, yep, so that's, that'll all be neat, yep. Okay, that's cool. that done. Cool. All right, so we're now ready to, I suppose we can start wiring these in, can't we? All we have to do is strip them. The only reason I didn't want to cut the cables just yet, the perfect length, in case we need a little bit of pullback. So my, my plan would just be leave that. All right, Let's all right. just fix the roof up, yep. all the solar panels. Cool. And then basically that's done. The whole system to this point is done. All right, cool. Let's go sort some solar panels out. Yeah. We're back up on the roof. We're now going to start hooking up the panels. We've got to splice the wiring together of each of the pairs and join them into our main box that we're putting on the roof. Once we've done that, everything's feeding through up to the front. We can start wiring up the charge controllers. Thinking maybe I'll, instead of taking this off, because remember, this is the next hurdle. That's a short one. So that's actually the positive. Yeah. That's the negative. Yeah. You just forget that little symbol there. Okay, yeah. Chopped off a bit short. So what we need to join that, uh, now the panel's going to go here. It's the next one, yeah. longitudinally. Yeah. Box is here. Yeah. We need to go in series. Should we sit that panel, just sort of sit it across there for now? I think so, yeah. Yep. Even overlap it on yeah. here, run the cables yeah. up yeah. underneath. So I'll just leave that there for the time being. Alright, well let's just come in over that one. Okay. So what do you want? See that's here. What's that one? Positive. And that's negative, right? So what we're trying to do, Scott's cleaning up some wiring that was cut pretty short. And one of the issues is it's cut so short that we're finding it hard to be able to solder and fuse them together out here in the open so we have to really stretch the wire to get it to meet what we're trying to do it's doable it's just tight this is our soldering line that we're using to do the wiring it's a little bit small so we have a slight backup for it <laughs> did you do <laughs> we just heat some uh, here up Normally you have a soldering line that's much bigger and wider, a lot more powerful. I think this is a 30, 30 watt, you know, it's little upwards of 80 to 100 watts at least. I think that's perfect. That's a good enough connection for me for the solar panel. All right, let's get the heat shrink on. <laughs> Pressure's on. Done. That's it, ready to rock and roll. You need a black one out of the main box. One of those. What size is what? 
Let's get a fitting. I'd go the short one that we can drive. Yeah. yeah, easy. So as long as they're both joinable to here. Okay. And easy exit. Right. That's what it's all about. Done. Let's um, get them spliced in. All right. DC loads? Yeah, all, all the lighting in the boat, um, the, the fridge, um, all, so, all the USB chargers. Okay. Um, do we want to... What do we want to get? Um, Hello, what? Hello. Hi. Hey. Oh, this is Jess. You haven't met Jess yet. Hi, Jess. I'm Dave. Hey. Know your voice? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's cool. Hi. Nice to meet you. So we've managed to get one side sorted, so we've basically put our little adhesive tabs all the way down, we've zip tied it up, we've got um, flexi conduit I guess, uh, across all of the different cabling and so on, so they're all lifted off the roof, they're tucked up nice and high against the panel, so if any water or ice or any chaos runs underneath the panels, they're 75 mil off the top of the roof, um, so we should be pretty clear of most things. Scott over the back here is basically just getting stuck into bolting everything up. Um, what we've done, we've coiled up all of our wiring, so um, it looks a bit messy at the moment. We're going to make this neater, we'll zip tie it up and so on. But we're going to start feeding some of that through into the, um, into the lounge so that we've got room for our circuit breakers. And Scott's just going to go through now and we'll bolt the rest of these panels down so that we're all um, in line and that's that one side complete. <laughs> oh dear, that's great. Have you seen the really uh, fluffy windshield? Yes, yeah. yes, uh, what are they, uh, dead rabbits? Yeah, yeah. We used one of them, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, surprisingly, yeah. this is... Okay. Yeah, surprisingly, this is... We actually found that. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, for some reason, but we found that one actually has less wind noise than the dead cat we were using. Oh, okay. It was a road, it was a $400 road with a cat on it. Yeah. Um, and that one's, I think it was like 120 bucks. and it's a better microphone. And it's supposed to be, the fluffy's supposed to be better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Maybe the other one was just, I think it's, yeah, yeah. maybe it's in the way, like, the little fluffy gets fall in front of the lens. Yeah. yeah. Get in the shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Clever editing to get the shot <laughs> without mm, the fluffy Let it build solid. Although I find my fingers often thing like a finger guard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or my thumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nothing, is, nothing is that good. Yeah, okay. Because sometimes it's like the day that's you know. It's, it's going to get damaged. Alright, so what do we want to do again? Yeah, so what, we'd, what we've got, so basically all, all of our positive and negatives are feeding into this one box. We're going to coil them up so that we, if we ever we need to trim cables or anything for whatever reason, we've got excess that we can just pull through. Also means if we need to, we can pull it through from the bottom when we're doing our circuit breakers. So they're not all, not all even length, um, but we are just going to try and coil them as neat as we can. It's a pretty small space when we get this much cabling tucked in it. Okay, scrap the silica gel, it's breathable from the bottom. The yeah, other? Screwdriver of any sort. Man down. Screwdriver down. The momentous moment. Sealed! Hey. Nice one. Yep, there, cool. Okay. Should be a fair bit left. Okay, 
we've shortened up all the links so we've got them nice and tight uh, we've put some conduit on we're now working the cabling and everything here so that we can drill our holes into our din rail box and get our circuit breakers mounted um, so to do that we have to pull off all the zip ties so Scott's doing that over here we're done. Oh nice, sorted. Okay, and then all of these are feeding through down into here into our Victron charge controllers. So uh, we'll start getting the wiring all tidied up down in these charge controllers and we'll see some numbers float up from the solar panels. Thumb is? Yep, cut it there. And then we've got that much. Yep, so right, cool. Yeah, alright, hold my thumb there. So we're cutting red. Nice and square. Cutting red. Yep, just red, just yeah. red. Alright, I'll do the monitor fine. So, a couple of little tricks that we've learned when using these um, black adhesive pads like this is stick two zip ties in it, so positive, negative, or left and right, depending on what you're trying to spread up. Um, do that before you start putting your cabling in and then also when you go to put your cable in you want to kink the end so you want to just like this so you've got a standard zip tie you want to put a kink in the end of it like that and it just helps you be able to push it up and through the little holes that are in the um, adhesive pad it'll save you a world of pain Eight panels, Uber Solar. Uber's gonna be happy with that. Right, I'm gonna do it with my ferrule. And the sun is shining. Sun is shining. So that's easy, as soon as you put a little. Mm. Oh, that will they fit? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Let's see that. What are you feeling for? They look solid as I like them. Cool, happy with them? Yeah. So, so that just goes like that. Yep. And then you clamp it. Tighten it down and you're good and you're done. Very nice. Okay. It was actually um, Adam, one of the guys that gave us a hand. Uh, he's a trained electrician in Brisbane. He was the one that put me on the boot lace ferrule. So we go that way. The YouTube box normally sits here. This is where we keep all of our cameras, our charge gear, all that sort of jazz. What we're gonna do, we need to run the conduit and the cables essentially down this wall and then through our hole that we made over in the far side there. So we're just gonna trim out, um, we've put the cabling, the four cables for the positive and the four for the negative inside flexi conduit. And we're gonna belt that all the way down the wall and into the area where the batteries are. So the issue we have is we put our zip tie pad things top and bottom of these cables and we put a, a zip tie over the top of them to try and hold them in. But the pads are starting to rip off, they just don't have the strength to hold in. So what we're thinking is one directly underneath each cable and we'll zip tie it straight to it and then there's no sort of pulling tension on it. So they're going to work their way all the way down 
if I move the camera, they work their way all the way down and then they go through the grommet that we made yesterday. So we'll put another couple of sticky tyres just up in here um, onto that uh, dark coloured metal and that should be enough hopefully to hold it while we put the panel onto the wall. <laughs> Beautiful. I just need some pins or something, eh? Mm. Let's start already. We'll start hooking these up? I reckon so. Alright, sweet, let's get into them. Now, I'll just double check the circuit breakers are off. Yeah. So, where's the thing? Okay, can I have a couple more zip ties? Yep. How come that ended up short? It shouldn't have been, I left a couple of excess inches there. I know. Like, easily a couple of inches. Yeah. Is it, it's is that literally the end of it, right there? Yeah. That's all right. Well, we can fix that. Do you want to come and get some food? It's ready now. Yeah. Come and have a quick break. And Time for food. Lunch. Time for food. <laughs> so while I've been off having lunch, Scott has been in the battery box of doom and he is soldering a wire that we found that was a bit too short. You can sort of see the working conditions. It's like pretty ridiculously cramped under there. Just a little hit and everything on there should just run through it. run to keep it nice right yeah you just run more conduit across to this one yeah. it just comes out the bottom of the conduit goes oh, across and back up it. and it's like a common rail yeah it just makes everything super schmick I because, want it to look nice yeah so I reckon do that right. um, but we can so if you bring yeah bring it out the bottom you can yeah. imagine why it comes out the bottom yeah. and over the top out the bottom and over the top like exactly that. like that straight into it Oh, okay. That just at the right length with a little bit of excess and then the conduit will go right across to here yep. and the final one will just go up and into it. Alright, so we'll cut that there. Boot lace next one. Yep. Um, have you got the bootlace crimper? Sure do. Yeah, cool. Now we adjusted that, right? Yep, yep, that's bootlace. Done. Just check the bootlace does fit in there. Oh, yeah, it's good. PB positive. Uh, nope. Without bootlace for this. <laughs> Damn it. I thought the this screw's not down. Maybe it is. I hope it is. That's probably all the way. Your boot lace might work. Bloody tight. I don't know if this boot lace will go in there. No, boot lace won't go in. Okay. Okay. Well, that's just how it is. So, neither is on that side, so we'll do the loop around like so. You're on a roll and you want to keep going? Ah, uh, hang on. I've got one filling out. The old pull test. 
Uh, let's do all the negative to the bus bar. That's the next one, probably the easiest. Yeah, and then you do the final positive layout when you're ready. Um, you've got negative and positive still to come out. Yeah. And all the negatives might have to right join on. this row down. One, two, three, four. Ah, so maybe we go with the big conduit. Then. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Sure. But either way, if you want to start running them all, we can bundle it all at the end. Or... Yeah. All right, so. So they're two long lengths, that'll easily get down there. Yep. You're going to strip both of those. Yep. And I'll get you two leftover negative more cables. So we're doing battery negative. Yep, battery negative, bus bar. Roger. Battery positive. The gut dog. So, that's that lot. So we've got reds. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Now we need to go and get conduit, don't we? To make it look real nice? Yeah. Yeah. Because so what we want to do is exactly the same as this. Let's get a couple of meters of conduit and then we've okay. got heaps for later. Four in a row there, that would look gorgeous. I used to um I used to work when I was younger, I used to do, we used to rebuild a lot of um big marine engines. Yeah. Yeah. I rebuilt this Russian fishing trawler. Or well, I was part of the team that helped do this Russian fishing trawler engine. Awesome. How big was it? Huge. Uh, the bore was big enough to stand up inside of and okay, put, put your hands out each side and yeah. feel the bore walls. And how many cylinders? I think it was, was it the four or five? Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't a big cylinder engine, but it was a big engine. It was like 5,000 horsepower, this trawler. Jeez. The cylinder head bolts are about 10 feet long. Oh, shit. I had to crack test every single one of them because they were too expensive to get new ones. Where you reckon that? I need some side cutters, clean up tags, and we're done. Don't need to mount this still. Wherever so, you want to mount that. So, so this is a 125 amp fuse that we've got. So our battery feeds come in here. This is a 125 amp that feeds our, all of our house load. And then we'll also have, up here we'll have a much higher, maybe five, 600 amp, depending on what inverter we get. And the inverter will bolt straight off onto that. Um, and power can flow backwards, so all solar goes that way and all load goes that way. Um, same deal with the inverter charger, all AC inverter loads from the battery come in this direction and uh, all charge goes in that direction from the generator back in. So this is our main protection fuse for the boat. This is going to be a distribution, positive distribution block here, our, yep. our buzz bar. So we just need to pretty much cut this anywhere. So I'll just cut it, I don't know what, six inches down from that switch. Done. So this is just whenever they touch and they go zero, 
yep. you get a beat. So first things first, uh, assuming everything's on. Yep, everything's off right the second. Uh, perfect, so off. I'm gonna go this bus bar to everything, basically the main battery input. So you're gonna hold here, I'll hold. I'll yep. Oh. Nothing? No. Perfect, you wanna hit some switches. First switch, solid. Perfect, so solid's working. That should be independent, so it doesn't matter. Yep. So that means that's working perfectly. Yeah. Positive is hooked up to positive. Yep. Now if we go back on again, I'm gonna go to negative. This should be, this should be nothing. So nothing cross fit there. Yep. Um, can you see metal screws in there? Yep. Cool, yeah. so if you just really go, I'm gonna go here. Yep. You just put into the positives of the battery. All right, let me just, does that make sense? Well, yep, so battery positive. Yep, into the hole. Perfect. And just go to the negatives to make double check. No, it shouldn't hang on. What's going on? Battery negative. Oh, no, this is positive. Go back to the negative again. Negative? Yeah, nothing. Go to the other one. Okay. Nothing. Yeah, so positive should be, negative should be nothing. Go negative. Negative, nothing. Nothing. Negative, nothing. Okay, just to make sure the negatives are working now. Perfect. And last one, just go through the positives. There should be nothing. Oh. So that's good. Cool. There you are. Yeah. Nothing. 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 Perfect. Done. I'm happy, happy with the lamp. That's positive. That's all done. Let's get rid of this guy. Yep. All right. So. Um, what I was thinking about doing is they're only little low voltage, right? We don't even know half your lights aren't going to work anyway. They're 12 volt, so yes. you can just connect them straight to this temporarily. Hook this up as a 12 volt system and have no solar because no, actually it's a 12. It's a 12 volt, 24. So you can run 12 but for I've as got, long as you want. I've got too much power going through each, each regulator for 12 volt. And that could be an issue. Well, only max out and then derate. But if you want a 24 volt system to set it up now. No, let's set it up 24 and I'll just get some lights. I'll just, yep. Wire some new ones up. Yep. I, I'll stay away from this now. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yep. No, that's one. Start fresh. That was always a, always a temporary. Yep. All right. So you, we've got one more thing to do once we clean all this shit up. Yep. And hook the batteries up to your main bus bar. All right. Let's give it a clean up. Or... Yep. I'm ready. Turn it off, turn it off, ready? Yep. 26, that's good. 26. Good charge. Nice. Are you ready to turn your regs on? Yep. I'll let you do the other. So what should we see then? Uh, that doesn't change. It means this becomes live and all these are powered. So this is going to be the first fire up of the solar system. Alright, so ready to go? Zero volts. 26 volts. So everything's live. Hey, we have blue flashy stuff. I don't know what I <laughs> oh, Nice. I'm going to assume that's well, good. Can I turn the solar panels on? Yes, turn the solar panels on, yes. Watch your voltage. Yeah, all right, let's go watch this voltage. So we've got 26.0 right now. Twenty-six point one <laughs> two. It's late in the afternoon, so there's not a huge amount of sun. 26.2, we need 0.2 of a volt out of those panels right now. If you've already got charged batteries. 0 0.3, 0 0.4. You can, you can tell which one's not hooked up, so that's good. Ah, ah, that's the, the right. The final one that we haven't got yet. Yeah, right, right. And hence it's flashy. And you're making power. Yeah, 0 0.5 of a volt going into the batteries right now. That's pretty cool. So let's go and download the app and see what we can see out of Absolutely. these. All right, awesome, let's do that. So we're going through and connecting to individually to each one of these Victron charge controllers. So use their app, um, it's a wee bit hard to see in the light, but basically their app um, is downloading the latest version of software. So these had 1.37 and we're downloading it to 1.39. Um, and then we can tell um, things like battery chemistry, um, what state of charge it's in, voltage going in, voltage going out, load, um, how many watts the panels are pulled in for the day, trends, all sorts of stuff. It's bloody amazing the stuff you can see on this app. Um, yeah, 
so far I'm really stoked with these they they were just absolute plug and play real easy to connect no dramas um, they just you plug them in and they just worked it was it was really nice and they all seem to sync like talk to each other without even doing anything they, they just yeah they just worked so um, really really happy with that so now the cleanup starts we've got bits of stuff everywhere so we have managed to get this bit all vacuumed out tidied up we've got a couple of temporary lights set up with our battery charger down the bottom there until we can get 24 volt lights we've got our cabling it's sort of neatly sitting in that slot that we created earlier we sicked it in sicker seems to be holding and through here all the way along look at that cable run oh ho, ho, handsome right the way around so works itself all the way around the top we'll do a little bit more clean up on that goes up through our circuit breakers and then out the back of that box it comes through our conduit through here through the box in the roof that's our watertight gland basically and then up to the solar on the roof so up on top the panels are in we've got our yellow safety trippy over thingy so that's gonna that's for our cables to go underneath it stops us from basically smashing into it and we are still trying to figure out a way to get our eighth panel until we can figure out where to get a 235 watt 36 volt solar panel we're only able to hook up 75 percent of the panels so those two are hooked up those two are hooked up those two there are hooked up and this one is sitting spare until we can get that eighth panel hooked up this is our main battery fuse so all power for the boat positive power flows through this 120 amp 125 amp fuse when we hook our inverter up we're going to put another fuse in here and it'll be whatever size that inverter needs three four five hundred amp whatever the inverter is and then it'll flow off over to the direct feed for the inverter however both of these positives are essentially hooked together so power can flow in through this port and go out through this fuse or vice versa in through here and out through this fuse it doesn't really matter what we're going to do i'm going to hook this terminal up this is the final terminal goes in there and that should have our battery monitor showing some lights so let's go and check that out all right so pretty straightforward we've got 25.7 volts sitting in the batteries right now uh, we've got a 1.6 amp discharge and our batteries I wouldn't believe this scale but our batteries are apparently sitting at 90% I need to go through and program it so I'll figure out what the instructions talk to me about that um, it's pretty simple you can go down here and you can increase or decrease your amp hour rating of your whole battery bank and then it'll give you things like time to discharge so it'll, apparently we've got uh, 56 minutes or sorry 56 hours until our batteries are fully discharged at the current rate of discharge and same when you're charging and you're um, you know you're drawing less than what you're putting in this will give you a time to recharge so it, you know it could be one two three hours until this is completely full um, this is pretty much all you really need to know um, yeah I love them I think they're so incredibly simple and this here is basically going to save your battery bank because you're never going to get too low they always say don't discharge more than 50 percent with lead acids um, you can go more with lithium and so on but by having this visual it's a great way to look after your batteries so there you have it house solar panels wired up to some decent tin wire through breakers and into some victron charge controllers running through a good battery monitoring system and then into our gel batteries for our 24 volt house bank um, the system's pretty good now we've been running it for probably close to two weeks um, and it's been really reliable we've got all of our lights and all of our dc power hooked off it we're about to hook an inverter into it so that we'll be able to get a bit of 240 load and actually start pulling a fair bit of power out of those batteries i really want to load them up and see what they what the system can do at the moment we've got fairly light loading um, with our dc system um, so i haven't been able to drain them down more than probably 10 percent of their capacity so um, I switched the solar off, I switched the whole system off and just started draining them as much as I could. Couldn't even get 10% of the, of the capacity to disappear. It's an 800 amp hour battery bank at the moment. Um, so yeah, there's a fair bit, of, uh, fair bit of power sitting in those. So once we've got the AC set up, we'll really start to see what the system can do. But so far we've been really happy with it and it's been really reliable. Let's
gonna cry when you're 